June 12th is a very special day. That's right, because it's National Kids Day. And on June 11th, the day before National Kids Day, Phil, no. No, not me. Not Phil, Paul. Paul. Paul and Darren. Paul and Darren are going to be at Nathan Phillips Square. Nathan Phillips Square, Friday, June 11th, present all the panties that we're collecting here at YTV, right over there. All right. Very cool. And uh, you know what? You guys can uh, collect your own pennies and bring them to any Toys R Us location. That's right. Any Toys R Us location will take the pennies, and you can also just drop them off at uh, Nathan Phillips Square. And a big, huge Brinks truck is going to be there to pick up all the pennies. Did you know that? Those Brinks guys are huge. I was going to be a Brinks guy. <laughs> what? Seriously? Oh, are you going to have one of those laughing fits again? Uh, I do have a problem with Are you going to get all I? excited again? That's okay. There, there needs to be more excitement and energy oh. and enthusiasm here in the zone, right? There, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so there you go. National Kids Day, June 12th. That's right. The day before. Collect your penny involved. things. Go to Nathan Phillips Square the day before. How We're was your weekend? We're doing pretty good here. My weekend? Ah, uh, kind of depressing. Feeling old. Had a birthday. He had a birthday on Sunday. Happy belated birthday, by the way, even though I did sing him happy birthday on Friday. You know what I got for my birthday? What? Something where I can monogram my golf ball. Hmm. Sounds great. Pokemon, up next. Coming up next, it's Pokemon, followed by Animaniacs at 4.30. Tape it where? Mm -hmm. On YTV. Sorry, gang. This couldn't wait. Gotta tell you about new Sugar Crisp cereal. They cranked up the taste. Sugar Bear! Gotta go. Must get taller. You can instantly win your height in CDs. Just look inside specially marked boxes of post Sugar Crisp cereal. You can win your height in great music, plus a Sony Discman and portable stereo. Oh, look at the little soaker. It may look small. Look again, Jack. He sold separately. It's a super soaker, super charge, a power pack. Super charges and fills up fast. It's a small looking soaker with a big time blast. Super soaker, super charge, a power pack. Built for power, built for speed. Super soaker's all you need. Hit them hard and hit them fast. XP 110's got the plan. Eat so Take out the super soaker. everywhere are being afflicted with elbow francais, aka French elbow, from making too much French toast. Luckily, there's French toast crunch cereal. It looks and tastes like French toast with the taste of maple syrup. So you can enjoy French toast crunch every day. And mom can save her elbow for the big game. Stamp out elbow francais with French toast crunch. Barbie bubbles free. Bubble fairy, woo! Bubble fairy. Spin it, 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 spin it,
talk about pressure. That's not pressure. This is pressure. The Super Soaker CPS Constant Pressure System. The CPS 1000 packs the full force blast from first shot to last. The 1500 dual nozzles let you control the stream. Substantial pumping required. Now that's pressure. Super Soaker CPS 1000 and 1500 each sold separately. The pressure is on. Anytime you pop the top, the first five, what's the flavor you can't stop? The first five, on the go, on the run, top the pop when you're done. The first five, each sold separately. We have a question from Clarence in the unknown province of Clark. He asked Reboot, what's a day in the life of a binome like? You know, one of these guys. Well, Clarence, it's pretty ordinary. We wake up, hang out, have a little breakfast, and then we start running for our lives. And after that, we have some lunch, and then we run for our lives again. And once that's over, we practice running for our lives. I like using the eight ball. And then afterwards, we like to put on big musical stage shows. That's me, third from the left. Reboot tonight at eight. Keep it clear on Black TV. The butler for the Adams family has taken a vacation. While he's away, they will need to hire a temporary replacement. You'll clean sleeping quarters, take the bats out for their morning jog, play graveyard games with the children, shine the axe, the cannonball, and make sure the smoke's just right for the soccer court. Must have a variety of over-the-top facial expressions and experience with extra, extra-large cigar lighters. If interested, send your resume to... The New Adams Family and all-new episode tonight at 6. Keep it weird. On Y TV. And yes, welcome back to the zone. It is Sandra and Phil. Did you hear that? There's a big storm outside. It is storming. Can you can you see? It's so dark out there. I don't know if you can see, but it was about like 3,500 degrees about like 10 minutes ago, and it's really sunny. Listen, listen, listen. What? You'll hear it again. Ah, uh, you won't. Okay. You know what day it is? Tell it them. is day seven. Yes, day of. Oh, bilingual still coming out. Day seven of 15 days of music. Yes, and yes. Uh, uh, yes. it's exciting because there's always a day we learn something new about all the different artists. That's right. I always get to read all the track listings from the back of the album. Take a look at this. It'll tell you more about the contest yeah. and how you can win. Like to take your music with you? <laughs> Keep watching The Zone every weekday for your chance to win. Now for today's hottest pop music compilation. And get up close and personal with your favorite performers. You don't want to miss a day because every new artist will be bringing a special mystery prize that you can win. You'll also win a crate of great product from Post, Andy Snatch, and Ostermeyer Brand. When you spot the one number, call in. If you're the 100th caller, you can win. Check out contest details at YTV.com. It's 15 days of music from Handy Snacks, Oscar Meyer, and Post Brand. And it's only in the zone. All right, so there you have there it. You That's go. how you can win. So when you see the 888 number come up on your screen sometime today during the zone, call that number and you could win. And now for a CD. And the feature music artist of the day. Sugar Ray! Oh, ow, my shirt just stepped on my toe when he went up close. Ow, that hurt. Did yes, he really? it's Sugar Ray. He's that guy that goes, I just want to fly. Put your arms around me. Is that how it goes? Isn't that funny? Really? Cause yes. No, well, yeah. Well, no, the, the real one's good. What's that new song? That was you funny. can sing the new song. What's the new song? Oh, I don't know if I can top that performance. Yeah. It was good. I liked it. You liked it? Animaniacs is up next. And when we come back, maybe um, later on, Phil can sing that new song. It's hot. My performance. Coming up next, Animaniacs. Then at five, it's Mugbat. Keep it clear. <laughs> on Y TV. Hi, I'm Phil in Toronto. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to apologize. We wanted the beginning of this uh, new show, Warp, we've been working on to be kind of like this big thing. But we let it get out of control. We should just do it. Nothing fancy. It's a show about science fiction and pop culture. Just a show. So let's get on with it. Just a show, just a show, just a show. Wing Commander for the Prophecy is a brand new CD-ROM out from Origin Entertainment, starring Mark Hamill. Now, what's the difference between film acting and CD-ROM acting? Well, Mark fills us in. Long ago, the prophets of Kilra foretold a time when their world would come to an end, and the universe would be consumed by great darkness. All right, I'm here with actor, writer, creator, Renaissance man. Mark Hamill. And Mark, tell me, what is Wing Commander Prophecy? Wing Commander Prophecy now is the fifth installment of the most successful space combat computer games in the world. And I came aboard in Chapter 3. The first two were animated. Chapter 3 was the first one that used live actors. An interactive game is basically a game where the player controls the destiny of the characters. So you can win, you can lose. Uh, there are draw scenarios where no one wins. Uh, but uh, the best way it was described to me was involving the player to the point where you can enter the scenario. My barometer, since I really don't get out all that much, I mean, on airplanes, in the, in the supermarket, people will ask me these questions. You know, when you meet, reach Mark 7, you dump your fuel to get the added boost, and my eyes glaze over. It's the old, I'm not a pilot, although I play one on TV kind of thing. I wouldn't be put off by, I mean, a lot of people say, gee, you know, I'm not really adept at the computer. Um, the way they've made it so that you can uh, be carefully introduced to it is spectacular. I mean, basically put it in, turn it on, and they guide you right through it. And uh, it's, it's, it's not something that you should uh, worry about. And like I say, play it in the computer store. It's, it's, it's uh, one of those things that's hard to put down once you've played it once. Dave Watkins, artist and psychic to the stars, has put the internet to work for the benefit of humans around the globe. His site is called High Profile, and it gives artists a chance to show their stuff, gives fans info about comic book artists, and gives a detailed history of African-American comic book characters. You can find his site at www.highprofile.com. You can find Dave right here. High Profile is a dynamic new website that's already up and running, detailing the professional aspect of the comic book industry. My involvement in the creation of the website was, uh, I guess, a lot of conceptualization. Paul Martin and myself got together and we started uh, trying to figure what was the niche that needed to be filled. How could we fill it and what was the best way to go about it. So uh, we just conceptualized and then we started working with the artwork and uh, all the programming. Well, we had to amass a, a, a large amount of knowledge a lot of information uh, detailing the industry in general. We had to do a lot of interviews. And for the Black Zone, we had to, I guess, start researching uh, black talent in the industry, and black uh, uh, writers and uh, artists and characters. So that took a lot of work. What sets High Profile apart from all the other sites in the net is content. Its content is so versatile and it has so much information that uh, people are coming to the site to find out the behind the scenes of the comic book industry. The services the website offers are getting your stuff published online. Um, it's a new publishing medium of the internet, so there's a chance to feature your artwork on the site. Basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to align ourselves with a, a publishing company. And what we do have to do for this publishing company, which will be part of us, is we're trying to find the most dynamic artists, the most dynamic inkers, the most dynamic colorists in the industry and push their work not only through the website but also in a tangible print form. So this gives them an opportunity to actually see their work come to fruition through, uh, I guess, submissions to us. Conquering a planet is not as difficult as you might think. A new video game entitled Global Domination shows you how it can be done in just three easy steps. Call the number on the screen and ask for Cindy, operator 263.
So spacey. Okay, I'm here on the set of Global Domination, a new game for PC and Sony PlayStation by Psygnosis. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk to the actors, we're gonna talk to all the different various producers uh, about the game, and uh, how do you do the live action portion of a video game? So uh, let's see what happens when we talk to all these guys. We're supposed to take a vacation, Phoenix. Don't you think you at least owe Phoenix an explanation? Maybe we should have checked the antivirus software on this disc, courtesy of Kitaboshi. Okay, I'm talking to uh, Kevin and Jonathan, producers here at the uh, Global Domination game. So, now, well, what's it like producing a video game as opposed to producing, uh, like, television or film, that, from your experience? It's a big, a big difference. It's very exciting, obviously, the whole different realm here. We have film and TV meet in the video game world, and that's a, that's a two different entire industry. Jonathan acts as the bridge because I come from a film and television background. This is my home. Making movies is what I'm all about. Jonathan came from this background and went into the video game world, brought us in to help him on this project. One, one phone call from across the ocean. Help understand Kevin. the game aspect and has answered most of our questions. Now, uh, tell me about your characters. I've heard people have been calling you the Duke. The Duke. <laughs> That's because uh, Vince <laughs> considers me a, a, a diminutive John Wayne type, but yeah, I don't know, it's all in his head, I think, so. What about your character? I'm called Lips. Well, I mean, that's a nickname. <laughs> it's yeah, the that's... gloss, I'm sorry. As soon as I put the gloss on, I got the character. Yeah. Well, that's what I was told. Yeah, no. When she comes up to because there's a lot of POV acting. You're, yes. You're, you're acting right to the yeah, camera. Yeah, absolutely. Which is, first of all, strange. Yeah, it is strange. I was actually very scared of it at the beginning, because you're taught not to look into the camera, right? But then after a while, now I love it. Now I could just stare down there and say anything, and, and it's, it's fine. There is a storyline like any other TV show, but uh, we a lot of what we do is the storyline progresses along, and then at some point, what we're doing is setting up the next scenario for the next level of the game. Yeah. Which is what we were just doing there. Now, part of the first part of that scene that we just did was the plot for our story, the, the live action stuff about the computer going the down. The romance. No, not, uh, not the romance. I, no, I'm too old and grizzled for. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no, I'm. It's. it's, it's that I'm the hidden man. No, it's okay. <laughs> you can drop it. Or she gets it. Take him out of Ryan. Take him. Right now I'm talking to Phil at the top of the uh, the set here. Phil, what's your, your job here? Well, I'm the actual game producer. You're the game producer? Yeah. You guys are really working hard on the, the filming aspect. And then the gaming aspect, so it's totally separate. And I hear they're being developed at the same time. Not one is finished. And one's been being worked on. That's correct. But no, actually, um, the game is actually still being worked on as we speak. Yeah. And um, the film and the game are kind of running concurrently at the moment. You see, the best way that we could get around um, putting the live action into this was to make it part of the game. Can I give you an idea? Oh, okay, special code, special something, where if you can get in, you can see all the actors' outtakes. Uh, oh, he knew it already, because he's the psychosis <laughs> guy from, from, from the content. Well, there you have it. I finally made it to level nine of global domination. I am now the, the world dominating leader type guy. And uh, hopefully when the game comes out, we'll be able to see it. And uh, I'll be a part of it now. The pulp heroes of the 30s and 40s and why you'd never want to run away and join the Jim Rose Circus. Up next on Warp. <coughs> <coughs>
The term pulp comes from the uh, cheap pulp wood paper that the pulps are printed on. Um, nobody makes that kind of paper anymore. They make newsprint, but it's a lot, that's even cheaper and doesn't last as long as the pulp. Uh, some of the pulp wood paper is so thick you can almost see the little chunks of wood in it. Uh, it was meant to be cheap. For, for a dime, uh, this was disposable literature. There's something you could read uh, once and then throw away. Some of the better known uh, pulp characters that I uh, had to use in my book were the Shadow and Doc Savage, especially the Shadow and Doc Savage. Uh, Doc was the reason why um, uh, there was a second generation of pulp collectors. They started collecting the uh, Bantam paperbacks. Uh, we published all 181 uh, Doc novels with great covers by Jim uh, Vama. The pulp characters uh, have not really died uh, in addition to the fact that people still know who the Shadow is and they are familiar with his laugh and the weed of crime, you know, bears bitter fruit, ha ha ha, and Doc because of the reprints. Um, the pulp characters have gone on to become other people. Uh, it's pretty well known that uh, Siegel and Schuster based uh, Superman, at least in part, on Doc Savage. They were big Doc fans who was known as the Man of Bronze. Uh, later, I think it was Julie Schwartz at DC even stole Doc's Fortress of Solitude for Superman. I shouldn't use the word stole, perhaps, but still Doc had it first. I wanted to write the book um, simply because I love the old pulps. Um, it didn't come out of some kind of a fanboy reverence for the pulps. It came out of, of, a, of a really deep appreciation of them. Uh, they were a lot of fun, and I read them when I was growing up, and uh, I just felt I owed something. I've had some feedback from uh, one or two of the original writers. Uh, you have to remember, though, that uh, most of those people are in their late 80s now. Um, many of the people, sad to say, that uh, I got to know and uh, interviewed and became friends with uh, from those days are now gone. Uh, it's uh, sort of sad, but I, I, I've dedicated the book to a couple of them, and uh, somewhere I hope that they, <laughs> they like the book. Sheridan College is a school just outside of Toronto, known the world over for its animation program. In fact, rumor has it that Walt Disney hires people right out of the program. Of course, I'm referring to Walt Disney, the company, not the guy, because, you know, Walt is dead. You want to learn how to animate? Well, you've got to make your way to Oakville, Ontario, to Sheridan College, where Mark Simon will instruct you in the art of animation. How are you doing, Mark? I am fine. Tell us a little bit first about uh, the computer animation program here at Sheridan College. It's a, a, a one-year uh, postgraduate pro program. We're looking uh, for uh, people with either fine art back background, graphic graphic design. They could be uh, industrial designers. Um, anything having having to do with a vi visual arts, ba basically. How have computers changed the world of animation? It's uh, sort of given us a few, few new tools. Uh, we, we've now uh, bring in kind of computers. Uh, we would be doing something like say puppet animation um, using a. Uh, 3D, 3D gra graphics, that, that type of thing. It's, uh, I guess, com comes alongside of uh, what we'd normally be doing with other uh, uh, um, puppets cut out, uh, plat plaster scene, that type of type of thing. But C CG car characters are now, uh, I guess, one of one of the new the new uh, actors coming in. That's one aspect. The other aspect is uh, we use the computer as a uh, compositing and compiling tool, so we can take say uh, two-dimensional type of uh, drawings we can scan th those in uh, color them very quickly composite them with other ones and actually get them up on the screen faster than what we would nor normally do with hand hand painting and uh, say working with conventional cameras with so many movies using computer animation will there ever be a time where the audiences can't tell computer animation from real life when it's really good you don't see it the obvious stuff is the dinosaurs and chrome people and things that becomes really obvious but it's, it's the real magic, and it's in the ones where you see it on the screen and don't and, and are not aware of it. We could have Jabba the Hutt having a conversation with us here right now. He is, isn't he? Hey, Jabba, what's up? Sheridan College has the computer animation program and the classical animation program. Tell us about the classical animation program. So we usually take in on a regular year about uh, between 150 and 120 students. Um, we usually graduate about uh, between 35 and 40 at the end of the three, three years. So there's a great, a great attrition rate either through, um, I guess, uh, choice or a lot of them just can't take the, take the demand. But the rewards are pretty high for uh, a lot of the people that make it, make it through. There are lots of Sheridan graduates out there working in movies that uh, you've all watched. Uh, how about this guy? Can you do me a favor and grade him right now? Uh, 
no, the sleeping I'm afraid he wouldn't be able to make it too well. It's just we don't we don't really take four people that do a whole lot of sleeping on the job. Sorry, Phil. No job for you, buddy. The Jim Rose Circus and a trip to Hong Kong up next. Hong Kong, the source of all things John Woo. Also the source of our next story. I'm here with Yao Fook Long. He's the chief artist for the Jade Dynasty comic book company here in Hong Kong. Let me first start off by asking you how you first got started. When I was six or seven, I really liked drawing. And I used to watch Batman on TV, action heroes. I would just draw and draw, even while I was in school. I'd doodle in my exercise book. It was affecting my academics. In junior high, I had no interest in school. I just wanted to draw. And luckily, this comic company was hiring, and they hired me as an assistant manager. So that was the first step. Give us a brief history of Jade Dynasty. Wang Chuai Comics is the biggest comic company in Hong Kong, the boss. Wang Chuai is a very experienced cartoonist who's been in this business for 30 or 40 years. So I've been working with him. He's a well-loved cartoonist in Hong Kong. He's very successful. The Legend of the Emperor is your most popular comic. Give us the general plot outline. The story of The Legend of the Emperor takes place in ancient China. It's about a common boy who becomes an emperor, who goes through many dangerous adventures. So what's it take to become a good Hong Kong comic book artist? You have to work very hard. You have to have good contacts within the industry. Plus, you have to be talented. And learning from other successes, like in Japan and America. There are a lot of successful cartoonists, but why are they so successful? You have to learn from others and incorporate your own experiences into that. Yeah, for Klong, thank you very much. Thank you. You know how there used to be that old tradition where every kid wanted to run away and join the circus? Well, this is the kind of circus that you run away from and then join a Bible camp for your viewing pleasure, the Jim Rose Circus. Okay, I'm here with Jim Rose, creator of the Jim Rose Circus. Now, Jim, tell me, what is the Jim Rose Circus? Nick, it's thrills, chills, and doctor bills. A ticket's good for a seat, but you'll only use the edge. A high-flying, bone-jarring excitement. And not all of it's for children. How long has the Jim Rose Circus been around? Uh, since Moby Dick was a minnow. Now eight years. What can one expect when going to a Jim Rose Circus? The unexpected. Why did you decide to put on the Jim Rose Circus? Because I just, you know, I come from a circus family, and I didn't see anything out there that was taking care of people from like 16 to 30. You know, most circuses, um, you know, are for six-year-olds. And I just wanted to bring something uh, live, real, raw, and dangerous. And what do you look for when you're looking for an act? Something that people go home talking to themselves about, or something that's really cool. Jim, what's the most bizarre act you've ever seen? It's not in my show. OK. Because I just, I was in Africa, and there was a street performer that would allow audience members to hold his eyes open while other audience members dumped buckets of dirt in them. Are there things so bizarre that you won't put them in the circus? Yeah. Uh, there's no blood in the Jim Rose Circus. Mm. So, uh, 
Yeah, that's the lie. You know, I mean, that's not a successful stunt. For example, I put my face in broken glass and let people stand on the back of my head. If I came out bloody, then I'm just like anyone else except for crazy. Wouldn't be charming. No, I'm trying to be charming. Yes. And by the way, don't try this at home. Go to a neighbor's house. No, I'm kidding. Don't try it at home. Jim, what for you makes a good show? Audience enthusiasm. I mean, if they're screaming and yelling for us, and this year it's been, since the X-Files and the Simpsons and all of that, it's, yeah, they've been very enthusiastic. Jim, tell me about your connection with the X-Files. Uh, Chris Carter read my book, Freak Like Me, and wrote an episode around it. It has my tattoo puzzle guy in it. It's that episode. I was the lead murder suspect, and it became the most popular episode. I know you know this, Nick, because you're Mr. Comic. It's true. But uh, the X-Files put out a comic book uh, on that episode just because of its popularity. And it was the highest selling uh, uh, comic book that they had. Very cool. Jim Rose of the Jim Rose Circus. Check it out. And Homer Simpson's not in the show anymore. He went back to Springfield. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what'd you think? Pretty good, huh? Pretty good. We'll talk. For sure. Did you see his face? Well, this is all the dancing and the singing. Together. What else do you need? Skills.